Hi guys, in today's video we will be looking at an all new tooled locomotive from Hornby. And this is a locomotive I've been looking forward for a few years now, same with the W1s. And this one is the Hornby LMS 8P Turbo Motive. And it's a Pacific, it's a 4 six two wheel configuration and this is of stanier design i got mine from hattons which i'll tell you at the end the product code you need for this is r30134 and this does have a die cast body this does make it era free as well being in the lms crimson lake livery i'm really excited to get into this view because i've been looking at this model for a while since hornby announced it 2022 i believe so here goes let's get into it shall we and see what it's all about if it's any good with the turbo motive, you do get a detail bag and a piece of paper with the instructions on. So let's start with the detail bag you get. So you get the brake rigging, I believe is for the locomotive. You also get a front coupler as well to add. Don't think the locomotive has an end pocket, like the front anyway. A fireman and a driver, you get some flanged wheels for underneath the cab. You also get a lamp as well, I believe to add at the front of the locomotive. Just pull the lamp iron out at the top of the door and it's there. You also get chain link coupling and a hook, some steps and a few other bits as well. There's quite a bit as the drivers are painted to may I add. On the booklet itself you get general information about maintenance, running in and motor and chassis stuff and pickups and how to lubricate it. Then on the middle two pages you get where to lubricate. You also get your accessories, where to add them where not to add them. Telling you about taking the lamp iron off at the top of the door, something about store to add the light or lamp they have. Also you have a point of where to change the close coupling. And we also have a bit about the assembly as well. And DCC fitting and sound. Looks like it may come with a triple cube speaker or not. One thing I may have to add in the instructions, it does say to take two clips out, which are on a tender. Instead it should be the locomotive, I believe. Then on the back we have the rear light controls for the tender, just slowly touch the side near the back. And then we also have a few bits as well, some important information too. The only thing that I wish they would put in this is the exploded diagram, the easement one. But apart from that, yeah, you get quite a bit to add yourself and to read. As we move on to the front of the locomotive now. On the front of the locomotive we do have some eyes knocked stuff off the tracks at the bottom. I think the iron guards I believe. We do have something moulded there on the pony truck. Does not look like to be an M pocket coupler, so I don't understand why we have the coupler in the detail bag, but it's there anyway. Moving on up, we do have metal sprung buffers, and they are oval and the metal's pretty shiny as well. They look the part. The buffer beam on housing is in red, with a few rivets around the buffers themselves. We have a hole for the hook and chain link. We have a vacuum pipe applied I believe and we have some lining around the edge of the buffer beam too in yellow. Moving on up we have one lamp iron in the centre. We have two at either ends which do light up in the direction you are going so if you're going forwards it is white and if you're going backwards they are red which is a great touch. We also have some steps behind that for the crew. Then in the centre of the steps where they meet we do have an opening hatch not sure what for, but we have that. We also have a grill in front of it. The opening hatch is a good touch, I believe, but what purpose does it serve? I, I don't know. We also have some piping along the smoke box door as well. We have a separately applied dart. We have the number of the locomotive, which is 6202. Then we have a grab rail at the top. And then we have the removable lamp iron, which you can change for the one in the detail pack with the light. And the light should work if you have this correct. A few rivets dotted around as well. And then we have the double chimney to go with it at the top. As we move now on to the side of the locomotive, both sides of the locomotive are different this time. So we're going to start with this side first. Obviously, the wheel configuration is a Pacific. It's a 462. And we don't have any motions or linkage and stuff that you would have a usual princess. We just have this block there with a looks like a door that would open and a silver circle the wheels themselves are metal they have thick metal tires we also have the axles and all of them all painted in silver we have only two rods in the center a bit more like a 060 style or a 
08 shunter styled wheels here and they are in black. Underneath the cab we also have the axles and some piping as well. This is a Stania Loco and this is in the maroon livery with yellow striping at the either end so in the cab and in the um, chimney. We do have a cladding, a long piece of cladding here which I think are for the turbines and the body for this locomotive is die cast. We also have some piping, some I think it's steam piping and some handrails. We also have some washout plugs as well. We also have a piping underneath the running board as well on the locomotive which is very delicate. It does look a bit unusual to a standard princess locomotive or a standard steam locomotive. Then as we get to the cab end, at the cab end we do have the number again of this locomotive which is 6202. Again some piping under there, I think we have a classification as well. We also have some glazing in the cab windows and a guard to I think stop stuff hitting the drivers in the face. We also have some lining as well. As we move on to the other side of the locomotive, this side looks a bit more like a usual steam locomotive if I'm honest with you. Again, we don't have the motion in this side at all, we just have these 08 style wheels and rods. So anyway to describe it for me. We do have that block again where the cylinders were. And then we also above it we have a small bit of black cladding. We have quite a lot around the other side, a small bit here. We also have some I think, oiling pots or sanding pots dotted around too. If you look on the cladding on both sides, you can see little handles and little hinges. So I'm guessing they would have pulled down to service what whatever inside. Like I said, I'm not an expert, so I do apologize. We do have splashes and they are lined as well, which is nice. We also have a few washout plugs. We have, I think they're sanding pots between the splashes as well. A few bits of piping too. The wheel underneath the cab is not articulated, it's stiff and the wheel on it um, it's flangeless, so if you want to change it, it's in the detail bag. For that, the cab side is really not really much the same, apart from the cladding that's near it, that's really it. As we move now on to the part that most people look forward to in a modern day steam or even diesel reviews, is the cab interior and what features the cab has or the locomotive has. Let's start with the main thing that everyone wants to know. Yes, it does have a flickering firebox or a glow, depending on what you run it on. And Hornby have replicated this pretty well. It that suits it perfectly. Everything inside the cab is painted. Uh, the dials do have numbers and a dial on and a white background. All the stuff is painted. Like I said, the piping is in copper. There's a regulator. I think there's a wood flooring as well. And I think there's a ledge inside to put your cup of tea on or something like that. Again, we have glazing as well. I believe we have a wood flooring. The four plate between the loco and tender does move a little bit and I believe it is metal as well. We also have opposable doors that are Hornby have done at the factory. So it is a highly detailed cab. I'm sorry if I've missed anything out. If we now move to the front of the tender or face of the tender, we do have a chute with some coal already in there. We also have some cupboards to put stuff in. We also have a handbrake and I think a water scoop brake as well or to let the water through. And we also have a few writings on the stuff as well to the water filling and all that sort of stuff. It is legible once you read it and know where it is. We also have handrails um, to help the crew get in and out the cab too. And they are metal. As we now move on to the side of the tender, both sides of the tender are exactly the same. I'm not sure if Hornby have retooled this tender or it's an old one they use on the previous models. I am really unsure. We do have the wonderful LMS lettering on this tender. You can see loads and loads of rivets everywhere you look. There's also lining too around the outside of the tender. And the tender does bow inwards at the top. We have handrails either side of the tender. And then as we look down at the bottom, the arches, they are lined as well, wonderfully done. We also have met black axle boxes and springs, and then we have metal wheels as well. This is a six wheeled tender, and we also have steps either end of this tender to go with it. As we move now on to the back of the tender. The back of the tender does have a coupling already applied. It also has irons to knock stuff off the tracks. The coupling that's already applied is the small NEM one with a pocket. We do have round metal sprung buffers, unlike the front which are oval. We have a hook as well, a few rivets. The buffer beam and housing are in red with the outside of it lined in yellow. And we have a vacuum pipe as well, I believe, at the back. Moving on up, this is where it gets a little more Interesting for me. Let's get the main feature out of the way with. We do have a working lamp that's in the center of the back of the tender. Depending on your direction, it's depending on if it's white or if it's red. 
So if it's going backwards, it's red. And if it's going um, forwards, turn to first, it's white. To turn this on and off, you just squeeze the side of the tender just very lightly. Basically where the L is on the LMS and the S on the other side. And it's easily done with your finger and thumb very lightly and it comes on and off depending on if you want it on or not. Because I know some people don't like the idea of the light, which I think is a fantastic idea. We have three lamp irons at the bottom, which look like to be slightly molded on. We have a few rivets. We also have six steps. So three either side going up there, crisply molded. They could even be separately applied steps. Then we have a water and coal capacity clap at the top. The tender back is lined in, I think, black and yellow, if I've got that correct. And it's in the maroon color as well. As we do an aerial view now on top of the tender, let's start in the usual place of top of the tender, which is where the water filler cap is. The water filler cap does have a separate applied handle. It does not move at all like it does on other models. We have a few rivets around there as well. And some looks like to be separate applied hooks uh, for, for top hauling, I'm guessing. And they have a few rivets as well. We also have a dome too. And then we have two chimney like things, which I believe are vents uh, for the water, if I have that correct. And the top of the tender is in black. As we move to the top of the coal now, the coal load itself is plastic, but it doesn't look too bad. The coal load isn't too big or too chunky. It's not too bad. It's quite good, actually. When you're getting it out, be careful. I think Hornby have sellotaped or glued them in, but they are plastic, like I said. Once you take that out, you can see the chute going down with a few rivets on it. Like I said before, the top of the tender does curve inwards, and you can see that from this view. And we also have a few cupboards as well for the firemen. As we now do an aerial view on top of the locomotive itself. Starting off at the cab roof, the cab roof itself is in black with a few rivets. The outside of the cab roof where the windows are is in maroon. The vents on this thing do move. I think I've got mine open, but they do move, they're quite easy to move. As we move along, we do have a well-painted plastic whistle and we have four safety valves. Again, they are metal, I think they turn metal as well. Again, you can see some more of this lining, which I think is black and yellow lining near the windows and you can see the glazing too. There's a few wash out plugs dotted around. On one side, you can see the running board. On the other side, you can see the, I think it's the mechanism casing which I pointed out at the start. I am not an expert, I do apologize. There's no lining on this at all. We do get, I think, a separately applied dome. And then we have some more lining before we get to the chimney. The chimney itself, again, is a double one. Either side, you can see some gold pots dotted around too, and some handrails and piping. And then at the front, we have the buffers as well. Everywhere you look on here, there's always new things I see, like rivets, little handles, little hinges. As we now do a underneath look at the locomotive, like I said at the start, I don't believe this has an end pocket coupling on the pony truck, or and it looks like it doesn't, which is a bit odd. Why is a coupling in there? You can't really now do a double header or shunt it into position on the light and the side ends. But what we do have here is, I believe it's three or four screws to take off the base keeper plate. Again, I believe it's contacts with the base keeper plate and at least six driving wheels do have copper strips going to them, which is the old fashioned way, and I quite like it. We also have some sanding pipes, some brake shoes, which do line up, and then we have the brake rigging that's in the detail bag. Like I said before, the pony truck underneath the cab does not swing, it's still, there is a screw in there to take out if you want to take off the flangeless wheels to add for flange wheels, and again, you can see the copper piping. One thing I just want to add, underneath the buffers at the front, they some foam or patch. I think that's to stop light bleed. So just be careful with that. As we now move on to the loco and tender, this being Hornby and this being 2022 when the designs say on the box, they have gone for their old fashioned version, which has a drawbar with two holes, depending on how close you want it, and two screws. So a screw on the loco, screw on the tender with some wires and plugs going across. It hasn't got the push fit that they have on the P2. I do wonder why, maybe it could be because the tender is an old version or maybe it was just later in development. Who knows? But for me, it does the job. We do have copper pickups on all of the six wheels on this tender. We also have the brake rigging applied to the tender as well. We have a water scoop in the center and then we have the NEM or butterfly style coupling at the end. 
I do believe there is some plugs for the lights of the front and back of the locomotive so when you take the shell off please be very careful to the loco and the tender. So yeah guys that's it on the tracks. Uh, next up will be a usual second radius and points test. I am interested to see if this can do second radius because I know my P2 really could not. So here it goes, let's see if we can do second radius shall we? And points. Pretty smooth, no issues. We're talking a 25. And this is DC ready. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it managed out pretty well and quite fantastic over the point and even the second rate just surprised me. No issues at all. I've seen a few videos out there where they were struggling on second rate, just but no issues on mine. Let's um, slow speed running and wind it a train, shall we? And I'll see you at the end. That is really nice. What's that? Less than 20? That is nice. And this is DCC ready, not um, DCC fitted. Let's give it a bit more speed, shall we? Again, very nice model.
So that's the end of the review and the running session. Before I give my opinion, I do what I normally do, which is tell you what it was pulling, which in this case, it was some railways and railroad Hornby Pullman coaches. Just something different to all the other reviews that are out there. Normally it would be LMS stock. I don't really have any LMS stock. I've Two or three coaches, that's about it. So something different, and it looks quite nice with the Pullmans. At the start of the video, I did tell you what I paid for my model, and I got mine from Hattons, and I paid £239.84, like I said, from Hattons. Yes, it's a little expensive for a model like this. If you bought this direct from Hornby, you would be paying £266.49. Again, it's a little high. It's just the way the hobby's going, sorry to say. Um, for me, I had no issues with the model. It was easily controllable on, on the Gage Master Combi controller I have. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. It has some fantastic features. Diecast boiler, lights at the front, glow and firebox flicker in the cab, a painted cab. And at the back, it also has a light as well. And you can turn it off by pressing the back of the tender just slightly and I think that's a great innovation honestly I do so I can see why it's a little high in price delivery was spot on I couldn't find any issues with mine nothing fell off mine it, it looked perfect it ran perfect did the points did second radius if you really really want one of these models and you can't wait I would say buy it but you could always wait for a sale from a shop or even Hornby that normally happens around January springtime they do a stock clearance sale and you can get these a lot cheaper normally if any are in stock at the time there's always a chance it may never happen i'm not going to tell you to go out and buy one of these models i can't do that because it's your money and not mine but for me i like odd models so this was a must for me like i said i have a w1 i have a streamline king a streamline castle in my collection so i do like odd models the only two issues I have with this model is we have a coupler in, in the detail bag, but we don't have an end pocket on the front of the locomotive. So you can't do siding pushes or double header with another locomotive, e.g. a princess or a jubilee or something like that, or even a W1. You can't do it for some reason. I don't know if that's a mistake on Hornby's part or they just forgot. And there's no exploded diagram. I don't think there was one in the P2, but there's only two issues that I have with not really the model but what you get i do like seeing exploded diagram and that's the other parts that go into it and, and this doesn't have it like that these are only my opinions on this model i kind of go my experience of the model and i had no bad experiences it's a fantastic model and i'm glad i have one yes okay it's a little high price but that's the way the hobby's going if you can kit build one that's great for cheaper that's great i do really think this is probably one of hornby's best models of all time, if I'm honest with you. There you go, that's my opinion on this amazing slash expensive model. Hopefully I'll see you in the next review. So please take care and goodbye.